<laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe, you magnificent bastards. Hey. We're learning today. Yeah. Uh, I think for this episode, because there's so much knowledge. Mm-hmm. I need to put on my thinking cap. All the knowledge. My thinking cap. You are gonna put on your thinking cap. And is a thinking cap to fulfill it can't just be any thinking cap, though. No, no, no. It's a very special thinking cap. It's not your SAT the hat. The tribe <laughs> voted on this thinking cap. Our patron, oh. our patron members. It's a whiskey thinking this cap. This is one of many to come. Okay. So let's go put on my thinking cap, and we'll circle back. I'm definitely going to need this bottle. Here's the thing. We do have access to a private salon, but why would we use it? Yeah, because then you end up with things like, Spin me, Daniel. Shit's going to get real. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh. <laughs> we should have called a stylist. You call a stylist. <laughs> Let's see if the bottle goes. Don't let Dave look in here. It's gonna be weird. Uh, Son of a bitch. There you go. You got some. Uh. <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs> Hey Dave, what's going on? Oh, hey, this is awkward. <laughs> I just got this one mullety chunk. Yeah, make it a rat tail. Yeah. Remember those? Oh, you I have, I had here. one. Yeah, but we just gotta, we gotta wrap this around your neck. <laughs> Chin strap time. Come on, here we go. This needs to be. Oh, <laughs> Wait, what? There you go. Nailed it. Let's look at the version on Pinterest. <laughs> Nailed it. There's a Let's good get one. Get this video over with. <laughs> So, our terms bullshit versus legit, these are whether or not there's a legally binding definition of regulation attached to the ability for you to use that word. Yeah, and also I would say that I'm okay with it if it's not a legal designation, if it does explain something you're legitimately doing. Sure. I'm actually okay with that. Well, and that's if it gives clarity as opposed to marketing fluff. Uh, so, let's go through the list. Let's okay. start with a bottle, sure. and then I'll ask you, and then we'll, it will go through these as we go. So, hey look, here's Jim Beam. Black premium extra aged oh, pre bourbon. Premium. <laughs> premium. There's two back to back ones that just make it so basically it's just like, hey, this is a little older than the generic. So, for example, beam. premium extra aged bourbon, premium bullshit or legit. Bullshit. Extra aged bullshit or legit. Bullshit. Bourbon. Legal. Okay, hey, so at least 51% corn aged in new oak. It has some regulations attached to that word, and you can't use that word now unless they are calling it Kentucky Straight Bourbon, like they call other bourbons, which is at least four because it has no age statement on it. How about this? Well, the Glen Rothes Vintage Reserve Space Side Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Okay, so vintage, bullshit or, or the joke? Bullshit. A reserve. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, that said, space side single malt scotch whiskey. Yeah, legal. So every well, single one of those. Yeah, they're all designated. Well, space side's not officially legal, but it's a designation, and you're not going to put space side if you're not from space side. Okay. So yeah, it's effectively single malt. Real. And that was another one. Single malt was in there. Mm -hmm. That is. Uh, and single malt is. I've heard people say, well, single malt's bullshit because it's just a quote. It's no, 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 no. Single malt is a legal designation right. of one distillery's product made with only barley. That is. Absolutely legit. Now, there are people who take that to mean it's better. That's bullshit. Right. But the term is absolutely legitimate. Uh, let's go to Ireland. How about boutique selection? Boutique. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Boutique does not have a legally binding definition. Nope. How about aged 10 years? 10. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's real. And the real <laughs> one, that means everything in here is at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then you said it was a single malt? Single malt Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey. And then Irish whiskey. Well, no. That has to be from Ireland? There's, it has to be from Ireland. Okay. So no, it's Irish. Right. We touched on scotch just a little while mm -hmm. ago. They're very, very aggressive about how the, the term scotch is used. Uh, what it means to be a scotch whiskey. Yep. Uh, I can't even leave the island in a bot without being in a bottle. and. Or it can't be called scotch. If it's going to be sold as scotch internationally. How about this one? This is from Texas. Handcrafted small batch blended whiskey. So handcrafted. It doesn't really mean anything. So, uh, bullshit term. So bullshit term. But here's one caveat that I want to give. This is a bullshit term, rule of thumb, broad strokes. Right. There may actually be some states 
that get aggressive about how you use some of these terms. Like, for example, I think... It's currently up for grabs. I think um, in Washington, for example, they may actually have some parameters for what it means when you to put use the term handcrafted. They don't in Texas. No, they don't. And in the vast majority Just talk of about states. Tito's, and you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, small batch. This is both small batch and handcrafted. Small batch. You see small this batch. everywhere. Not a real thing. What is... For Buffalo Trace, it'd be like, we only used 40,000 barrels in this run. Okay, so for example, Jefferson's. Which is huge. Mm -hmm. Jefferson's Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, very small batch. Mm -hmm. Their very small batch, I promise you, is more whiskey than we're going to make in the next 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> that's very, <laughs> very possible. Like uh, we were talking about in the group, Bamore, their small batch, Yeah, it's their basic bulk line. And that's not a small whiskey <laughs> distillery. No, How about Double Wood? Oh, that's just saucy. Which could be double, triple. This could also be triple mall, double mall. Everybody get in a pile. Are they putting twice the amount of wood in there? Uh, well, they're maturing in two separate casks and then blending together, okay. if my memory serves me. Um, but then there are other people like Lafroy where but that's very common. they're taking one spirit and moving it from barrel to barrel to barrel. That's a very common thing. So yeah, it's very common. You can throw around double woods and triple woods. Other people call it finishing. So they could have easily have said this was finished in blah, blah, blah. Right. But actually, I think what they're doing, because they're using two separate barrels and pulling them together, sure. it's not really a finishing. So they're trying to communicate something. They're trying to communicate something. Here's it's not a legal term. Yeah, it's hard to take you seriously right now. It really is. Here's the thing, though. Uh, and it, it is a fairly serious point. It would be easy to go down the aisle at a liquor store and pull out 70, 80% of the bottles and find one of these words and think, ah, oh, they're bullshitters. They're trying to lie to me. It's like, eh, not necessarily. At least Our, try to give them the benefit of the doubt. The point we're making is these words that you see so often in whiskey, if used correctly, are describing something in the process that they want to communicate to you in the shortest, fewest words possible. Yep, which is called marketing. But, uh, because there's no regulation attached to those words, any whiskey company can attach any word for any reason, for, for no reason whatsoever, and it can be total bullshit. Yes. So these are the words that And that, that sort are, of ruins it for everyone. Yes. It was like the whole sourcing problem, where it's not really a problem except that some people were pretending they weren't sourcing. Yeah. Well, before oh, you I'm going to make it feel a little bit better. Before you get, you need to show us your boobs now. Yeah. Uh, before you get to, to the dark cry, mm. um, I want to ask about one of the uh, more recent darlings in whiskeydom, mm. Japanese whiskey. Oh yeah. So we sort of discovered that uh, Japanese regulations allow- Wildly, wildly popular. Right yeah, now. allow Japanese producers to source whiskey from anywhere in the world, yep. bring it into Japan and bottle it and release it as Japanese whiskey. So there's a lot of Japanese whiskey, which uh, is scotch. I know there's a lot of Scottish whiskey that's being brought in. And it's usually ones, I, I'm not saying it's this one, but it's usually ones that don't say a single malt, it'll just be a name. That's For example, no one knows if this is actually made in Japan. Right. Except for the people in Japan who are making it. The Basil Hayden Dark Rye is a weird one for me. Okay. Um, I think it's misleading because they release a rye. Okay. And so, because side by side you can see a rye and then a dark rye, you think that what you're getting is a rye and then maybe an extra charred oak rye or something like that, or right? aged super long or something. Yeah, but really what they did was took Canadian rye whiskey and blended it with port. Hmm. Now, to be fair, do they say this on the back? I mean, it's right on the front, but still... But the name, you say... The name is super misleading. I don't know, I'm on the fence, because they're not hiding it on the back. Look at the two. Side by side. Yeah. Dark Ryan rye. and dark rye. Yeah. You can see how I'd be like, well, until you get to there. And you're like, oh, okay, I see what you did. Just a touch of port unveils an entirely new taste discovery. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> fair enough. Does distiller select mean that the distiller is doing... Fair oh, yeah. So sometimes, like for example in the Laphroaig editions, like lore, that are no age statement stuff, it's because someone actually picked this flavor out of the warehouse and created it. Yeah. But distiller select as an industry term means nothing. Okay. In theory it's supposed to mean that like with this one. Yeah. This one we were really serious about carefully picking. Yeah. Instead of letting the machines pick it. Yeah. This but really, yeah. the distiller made all of this and they said yes. Now sell I have all of this. It. it has been selected. <laughs> the vast majority of these words have no legally binding. Okay, definition. let's talk about real ones. Yes. What are the hand? Because I'm assuming there's a small handful. What is a small handful so, that actually means something? Any term referencing a grain is probably going to be a legal term. Rye, bourbon, malt, single malt, blended malt, pot still, 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. All legally, right? Anything that has to do with the country, legally regulated. Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey, sort some, of Japanese Some countries whiskey. more regulated than others. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything that has to do with proofing, cask strength, that's, it doesn't relate to a specific number of cask strength. Right. If it's cask strength, it doesn't have to be above a certain proof. Yeah. But there's sort of a general understanding that if it's cast strength, it's probably going to be in the 60s range, so 50s and 60s. So that's a general understanding. It's a general understanding, even okay. though it's not industry regulated. Okay. Uh, we did find out that for one of our releases, uh, we can't call it single barrel release. Why? Because we're going to finish that in single malt barrels. Oh, so now, single barrel can't be finished. But here's the, re well, no, no, that's not true. So here's the reality. According to the federal regulations, we could take one barrel of Wyoming. Right. Finish it in something else and then bottle it, right. and still call it a single barrel. The uh, cola totally approved that label. Now, in the consumer side, I think that's incredibly misleading, right? Because it wasn't just taking a barrel and putting it in a bottle. Yeah. So even though cola approved this the single barrel cask strength, yeah, I already removed single barrel from the label mm -hmm. because I felt bad about it. Sure. And so now it's just a cask strength release that we're going to be doing. But that's a real thing. There's often things that the feds will allow you to do that are totally misleading. Now, chill filtering, non-chill filtering, that's real. That's real. Um, in some countries, you're required to put whether you add food coloring. The e and it, like in America, a, you can't call it bourbon if it has food coloring in it. Okay. And Scotland uh, doesn't police that. Germany really does. Bottled and bond. Bottled and bond is the strictest whiskey regulation in North America. Okay. It means... Meets the designation of the bourbon, right? New oak. One distillery, uh, at least four years old, bottled at a hundred. Yeah. It's got entry proof limits and things like that. Uh, it has to be the product of a single distillation season. Oh. So you can't, like a single malt, you can have multiple seasons. It's the same distillery though. Yeah. And then you can blend no, together. No, but bottled and bond, it's like, no, it has to have been all made in this one chunk of time by this one guy. Right. It has to be in there. And has to be bottled at 50%. There's a couple of things. So I'm going to open up the comments from the Magnificent Bastards in the Whiskey Tribe here, seeing if there's anything that fell through the cracks. I'm sure there's many. This is not an exhaustive list. No, it's really not. Uh, it's more of a principle of the thing situation. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Tennessee whiskey didn't used to be a legal designation, but now it is. So Tennessee whiskey, for all what I understand, it's damn near bourbon, isn't it? Well, no, it is. <laughs> I'm going to start a fight in the video. <laughs> so here's the thing. Tennessee whiskey wasn't a legal designation, but it definitely described a process of charcoal filtering mm -hmm. a whiskey. Now, the mash build that gets charcoal filtered technically qualifies as a bourbon okay. because it's at least 51% corn. Sure. But the filtering process is unique to a couple of Tennessee distilleries, uh, or it was, and so they called it Tennessee whiskey. Okay. And uh, fairly recently, that became a state level legal designation. Seems like it's a really restrictive state level legal designation. It is. Okay, so... And a lot of distilleries were not happy about it. Yeah, we're in, we're in conversations uh, with some people talking about Texas whiskey. Yeah, what gets defined as Texas whiskey. And a lot of these legally binding definitions, mm -hmm. there's pretty giant loopholes. One of the ongoing jokes we have in the tribe is a bourbon that we're going to make called technically bourbon. Yeah, because there's no time designation for how long something has to be in a barrel to be called bourbon. It just has to be aged in new oak. Right. But it doesn't say for how long. Right, so we could leave it in there for like a day, an or hour. Or 15 minutes. Or 15 minutes. <laughs> Take it out. And it's basically what? Clear. It's, it's just moonshine. It's a, it's a clear spirit. All right. So at the end of the day, whenever you guys are choosing uh, the bottles, that you want to take home, just understand that there's only a handful of legally binding definitions, all the other stuff. If the distiller's cool, then they're using those words to help explain part of the process. If they're bullshit, then uh, yeah, they just did it to make it sound like a fancier bottle. Yep. But the biggest thing we try and champion in our community is that it really doesn't matter what's on the label. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is whether or not you like what's in the bottle. Yeah, and that's enough. Yeah, the best whiskey is what? The whiskey that you like to drink. However you like to drink it. Here's what I want to do. As, because we just made such a wonderful, valid point. Yeah. Bringing knowledge and maturity to this industry. Um, the whiskey that was in this bottle. Oh yeah, yeah. We the Sir Edward Smokey. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> the top shelf. I want to make you a very special glass. You're back right here. You're making me a very special glass? You ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's in nice. there. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs>
<laughs> I hope you washed your hair. Wait, am I actually gonna drink this? Is that the thing? No. Yeah. <laughs> Why does it always end up with me consuming some shitty You're product? complaining about this episode. Oh. Oh. Use shampoo or some kind of conditioner. <laughs> you can totally smell it in there. Get in there, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Did you see? Just, 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 just look, look, watch the hand. Son of a bitch. Oh, Daniel. You think you're clever? Think you're smooth? Think you can slip one by me? Mmm. I will not be denied shenanigans. Here's the fight. <laughs> Stealing and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you, you drink with us. No. Not this time, Whittington. You are fucked. Oh. Oh. I have an idea. I have an idea for something so twisted. So diabolical that it takes two. What say you, Sparkle Master Chad? Chadwick. Chadwick!